Hey YouTube people, in this series of Back to Basics, I'm doing oil changes on three different kinds of cars. that will likely have one of the systems your car will use for its oil filtering and for changing its oil. The car I'm going to be changing oil on now is a 2013 Hyundai Santa Fe. It's got a canister at night, which uses a separate element. It comes looking like this, and it also comes with a kit that includes the gasket for the drain plug, as well as the O-ring for the canister, which has to be replaced every time you remove it. So follow along, I'll walk you through the steps. It's very basic. If you haven't done it before, it might be a bit intimidating. If you've done it before, well, you know it isn't. All right. Under the car, somewhere, you'll find it in a manual. There's a drain plug, a certain size head. This one happens to be 17 millimeters. Put a ratchet or a wrench on the drain plug, loosen it, and then you should be able to remove it by hand. The reason you want to do that, you want to have a drain pan ready. I apologize for the wind noise and the sand blasting. You want to have a drain pan ready to catch all the oil that's going to drain out. You don't want to drop your drain pan, your drain uh, plug in that pan. Or the washer. Since it's very windy today, you get a nice oil spray all over everything. And have to wipe that up. car takes six quarts. It doesn't take that long to drain it all out. It doesn't take much longer to clean it all off. While that's draining, you take your drain plug. Take your drain plug. Take off the old washer. Put on the new one. Let's see this is. Alright. So with the new one on, when the oil gets down toward the bottom, you ask why am I changing the oil on such a windy day? Well, because the car is due for an oil change, and for all I know, the next two months are going to be below zero. So, I change my oil when I can, when I have a chance, despite it not being optimum conditions. You might have the same situation, they do. All right, the new crush washer, not crush washer, I guess. It's a washer serving as a gasket. It comes in the oil filter itself. Screw that back in. And if you know it, if your car has a specification for how much to tighten the bolt, get yourself a torque wrench. That's yes. Well, the bottom of this car is not going to wrench, I'll tell you that. All right. I set my torque wrench to the specification that you can see it on there, 30 newton meters thereabouts. You can do it in SAE or you can do it in metric. And when it clicks, they're all done. Ready to go back up to the top of the car. All right, YouTube viewers. Continuing with the Santa Fe oil change, we drained out the oil, put a new washer on the drain plug, and torqued it back to specs. Now we're up above, 
it's time to take out the oil filter which comes out from above on this car and fill it with oil. First step, remove this big decorative plastic engine cover. Get rid of any leaves around here. And this right here, this canister, is your oil filter house. Way back when, when oil filters first started to be installed on cars, they were even an accessory for some models. And they would have an external canister to which oil was directed, and in which there sat a filter element. Kind of like this one here, that Hyundai supplies. This housing is built right into the engine block, or mounted right on top of the engine block. And it takes a 27 millimeter socket to loosen the top cover of this engine oil filter housing. When it's loose, just wiggle it up once it's past all the threads. And there you go. There's your old filter element and the cover. You wipe the oil out of the cover. There's a lot in there. And you replace the O-ring on the cover. There's an O-ring right along here. Just take a pick and work it out of its groove until it's off the housing. The new one comes in a bag. I like to install it with a bit of oil on it. Easiest way to do that pour a tiny bit of clean oil into the bag provided. and work that around the O-ring. And now, I've got a nice, clean, fresh oiled O-ring. Wipe around the threads of this, they're clean. So I can just roll this over until it sits in the proper groove, which on this engine is right above the threads. The threads go here, and there's a groove right here for the oil O ring, the oil filter cover O ring to sit in. There we go, that's all set. Let's put that aside, pop out my old filter. Before I do that, there's another O-ring I'm going to want to pre-lubricate right here on the bottom of this filter housing. It has a little protrusion. The oil that I put in that bag is still clean. Just wipe it around there. And that's ready to go in. This bag also serves one other purpose. Wiggle up the old oil filter. Make sure that O-ring is still installed on it because you don't want to leave it down in there. Put it in that bag. So you just throw it away in the box it came in. Now, there's one spot in the bottom of the filter housing right there which this nipple fits into. Make sure it's seated in there. You can tell it's going to be seated. Just push it down once it's caught there. And then when you tighten this oil filter cap, also oil filter housing cover, this little metal ring is going to protrude through the top of this fiber hole here on the top of the, the element and push it down and lock it all in place. Push it down, 
twist it on by hand. Once it gets too tough to tighten by hand, use a socket wrench. And if that old ring is oiled, it should slide right into place. It should thread right into place. And then, this calls for being torqued down to 35 newton meters. Set my torque wrench to that already. There we go. That click tells me it's seated. Now, time to fill it with oil. Always fill it with what's recommended unless you have some serious reason not to. This calls for 5W30. We're going to use 5W30. And you always want to clean out your oil funnel because who knows what gunk has gotten in it since you last used it. You don't want that garbage going in your engine. Spray it with brake cleaner if necessary. Anything in that filter, anything in that uh, funnel is going to go down into your engine if you pour oil into it. So make sure it's clean. what's happening. Let's take six quarts and we'll start with five. And as mentioned previously, everyone should know this, pour with the, with the opening to the gallon jug at the top so that air doesn't cause it to go glug 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 and spill all over. Also on a windy day like this make sure there's not sand and dust and dirt and leaves flying around that will get caught in the oil and go into your engine. You don't want that. You want clean engine oil. You don't want debris in your oil. It's just about done. So it's got some oil in there. I'm going to let it drain the last little bit. You're never going to get all of it, but you get most of it. And then I save this jug to recycle the old oil. Pour it in there. Bring it to the auto parts store for recycling. All right, that's enough time. Here's the thing you learn by doing stupid things. Whenever you change your oil, just filled it up, didn't I? Well, make sure it shows on the dipstick. might be too full because it has to fill up that oil filter in the canister there. What do we got? We got oil on the dipstick. I want to run the engine and back the car off the ramps so that I can tell whether uh, I want it on a flat surface. I'm going to shut it off. It'll have filled all the oil passages and then it'll make sure also there's no leaks on any of the housings or on the drain pan. One time, did an oil change on a 79 Plymouth Horizon. Drained out the oil, put on a new filter, filled it up, looked on the dipstick, it was dry. I looked under the car, there were four quarts of oil sitting under the car. Forgot to put the drain plug back in. You can learn from your mistakes, you can learn from the mistakes of others. All right, time to start it up and make sure there are no leaks. Nope, no leaks. 
All right. Time to put the cover back on. This sits on little studs and just pushes into place. Let's check the oil. Wipe the dipstick. Put it in again. What do we got? It's just up to the low mark. So I'm going to put in a half a quart of oil and see where that brings me. This oil conveniently comes in five quart jugs, which is not all that convenient if you've got to fill six quarts, but buy two, keep another around as extra. How do you know to put in a half a quart? Well, you look at the level showing on the side through this little clear window. Figure out what a half quart down would be. Fill it until that much is gone. That oil now has to filter down through the engine. Get to the pan at the bottom. It's probably done that by now. Let's take a look. There we go. I don't know if you can see, it's right up to the fill mark. If the oil's clean, if you tilt it and twist it at a certain angle, you can see the sheen of the oil versus the dry dipstick. So we're good for another 3,000 miles. Alrighty, might as well at this time take a look at all the other things under here. Get leaves off of your exhaust manifold. Check whether there's leaks or broken hoses. Looks good here. All right.